to be here passionately to say to you, don't make that mistake. I thought the, uh, the session was, uh, was very important. It was an important event for us, the United States government, to show our solidarity and our support for Nigerians and their democracy. And that was the reason why the Assistant Secretary wanted to come and talk to the Nigerian youth not just to encourage them to vote and participate in the democratic process, but also to underscore our solidarity with the people of Nigeria and with their democracy. A very good afternoon to you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for waiting and thank you all so much for being here. My name is Gifts David and it is my honor to be today's moderator of this panel discussion that is brought to you by the United States Consulate General in Lagos in partnership with HIP TV, our official broadcast partner. So today we're going to be talking about a very important um, topic and the theme is youth involvement in democratic processes and as you can see my panelists are already sitting very chill you know oh he had to take off his sunglasses <laughs> i don't know why he had to do that but it's all right they are sitting right now you know to dissect the topic and the theme of today uh, but i'd like you guys to give yourselves a round of applause thank you so much for coming um so at this point i'd like to introduce my panelists as you can see, them looking very fine. Right here, I have a media entrepreneur, um, a comedian, an actor, a filmmaker. I mean, he's one man who wears so many hats. A lot of youth in Nigeria and outside. His name is Ayomaku, popularly known as AY the Comedian. Please, a round of applause for him. I mean, it's not easy. Okay, and then I have the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. She's President Biden's top diplomat for Africa and was sworn in as the U.S. Assistant Secretary for African Affairs in 2021. Please, a round of applause for Molly Fee. Thank you so much, Molly, for joining us today. Thank you, Kim. Okay, and then we have a reality star, a rapper and a songwriter, very exceptional in his field, known as Lekon. A lot of you guys don't know his government name much. is Olami Lekon Agbeleshe, right? Olami Lekon Agbeleshe. Agbeleshe, oh my goodness, my Yoruba is terrible. But thank you so much for joining You're us. Welcome. And of course, I have an exceptional lady who, you know, keeps breaking the bias and breaking boundaries every time. I mean, she went from being a dancer to being a coach and now a doctor. Please, a round of applause for Dr. Kathy. Kafana Shafao, as you all know her. Thank you so much for joining us. And at this point, I'd also like to recognize some special people in the audience. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of the United States Consulate General, Will Stevens. Please, a round of applause for him. And we also have a creative entrepreneur and Nollywood's highest, one of Nollywood's highest grossing actor, Danny Okolao. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And to all the Consulate General officials in the house, I greet all of you. Please, a round of applause for them. Thank you so much. We're in the American corner, and we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, you know, that's very important to us, especially in this generation. And the theme is youth participation in democratic processes. Right, so Nigeria is approaching its seventh consecutive election since return to democracy, marking 24 years of uninterrupted democratic rule. In the build of this election, young Nigerians signed up in record numbers and the youth population tops the INEC age distribution. Nearly 40% of total registered voters are under 35. I mean, this is quite impressive. And they seek to get involved in democratic processes and make their voices heard. So today's session, we're going to focus on ways that we can promote youth involvement in democratic processes. So first, I'm going to go come to you, AY, right? The 2023 elections are very, very close, and we're all enthusiastic about it, right? Do you agree with the notion that the upcoming election will be one of the most consequential in Nigeria's recent history? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I can tell you for free, uh, a lot of youths, a lot of Nigerians collectively are ready for this particular one. This is going to be uh, a tough one. Like, the numbers are already uh, speaking for itself. Uh, before now, the Nigerian youth, we do maintain that uh, uh, 
lackadaisical attitude when it comes to being part of the process. Uh, reason being that we have been cajoled to believing that uh, your votes, our votes doesn't count. No matter what you do, your vote doesn't count. But right now, in 2023, I see a lot of people on queues trying to get their PVCs. I see a lot of people, you know, uh, talking to their mates. I see them advocating collectively to see that, yes, come this 2023, we are going to get the change and we're going to put in place the right government that Nigeria deserves as a nation. So, Mali, I'm coming to you. So, recently, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, imposed visa restrictions on individuals who are involved in undermining the democratic process in Nigerian elections, to show you how important this is to them. I mean, can you tell us why they took those actions? Well, simply because Nigeria is so important. This election is consequential for your country, for the sub-region, for the continent, and for the globe. I'm here to admire the leadership that you have all shown and to be a friend as a fellow democracy. So the idea of being a fellow democracy, and we have had our own challenges, is to encourage uh, Nigerians to make sure that this election is peaceful and that the results are respected and there is uh, no effort to take down what you have built. And I want to encourage everybody to feel confident that their vote matters. So coming to you, Lacon, um, youth candidates have rec recorded a decline from 34% in 2019 election to 28.6% in the 2023 election. While the decline in youth candidates is very evident, the level of young female candidacy is even worse, according to YIAGA Africa. Now, how can youth and women, you know, overcome the barriers as they seek full inclusion in the democratic processes? Thank you for that question. You're I'm, I'm going to quote some stats now. Oh, please, go ahead. To, in 2019, the APC presidential form okay. was 45 million naira. Okay. The PDP, 12 million naira. Mm. In 2022, which is for this coming election, mm -hmm. the APC presidential nomination form, 100 million naira. The PDP presidential nomination form, 40 million naira. The State House of Assembly nomination form for APC is 2 million naira. PDP, 600,000 Naira. Senate, APC, 20 million Naira. PDP, 3.5 million Naira. House of Rep, APC, 10 million Naira. Um, PDP, 2.5 million Naira. Governorship election, APC, 50 million Naira. PDP, 21 million Naira. Now, there's an increase from 2019. Wow, there's a decrease in the standard of living in the country. Also, the 2018 um, bill that was passed, Not Too Young to Run, allows, it reduced the ages from 45 to 30, 30 to 25, but the money to get the forms went up. So it's not a not too young to run, it's a not too poor or not too rich to run. Mm, okay. So how am I, me, myself, going to participate as a candidate with the money that that's minus the mobilization and campaign funds and everything how am i going to get acquired the form and how am i going to participate in an election when it seems like we are being disenfranchised systematically so you can pass the bill but then you raise the money that i can use to get the form it doesn't make any sense so it seems also Youth participation in democratic process, never the initiatives never seem to be organized by the federal government or state government themselves. It has to always be NGOs or consulates. So it seems like the system itself or the political system in Nigeria itself is not going to allow you as a youth participate as a candidate. What the youth can do is talk about it as we are talking about it right now and try and find a way for ourselves to go in there and change. The, I think it's the system. It's a, it's a systematical problem and it's also a psycho-ideological problem. That's what I think. It's not just, oh, 
we don't have good leaders. We ourselves, are we good people, first of all? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Are we good people? Because, thank you everybody, because there's full scarcity. And then you find your normal person like you increasing the prices of the fuel. That's one thing. Then some people are selling roadside fuel. Then they increase it more. They still mix the fuel with what would mess up your car engines. If that person becomes a governor, what is the person going to do? So it's we as a people first off. That's the psycho-ideological part. And then the system is still there going to frustrate your every action to try and change anything. Okay, so coming to you, Dr. Kafi, I mean, the elections are in a few days. At this point, we can start counting days already to the elections. Now, what would be your advice to the youth and the young Nigerians that are out there about this election? What would be your advice to them? Is I would probably categorize it into like three, four categories. Please go ahead. Number one, you want change? You don't change, change is not going to come. Mm. So you cannot change with a formal ideology of the idea that change can't come because change is not going to change because people are not changing. The ones up there are not changing. Are you ready to change for the people that are not changing so that it can be changed for the change you are seeking? <laughs> so, That's a lot of change so, that needs to be done. Me, the only thing constant here is change. And if you want change, you got to do something different. You, you got to wake up different. You got to, if there's a line for your voters card, go there and stand there. That is your civil responsibility. The obligation of a greater Nigeria is on the neck of every Nigerian not until the leadership of Nigeria. Do you understand? I am here as a single entity of Nigeria and I've been able to create a bigger entity of myself based on the belief in Nigeria, for Nigeria, by Nigeria, to Nigerians. So that's like he said, if we are for each other and looking for something that will govern us by truth and honesty, are those the things we live by? Do we live by do we, are we ready to be accountable for, the, for what it takes to be honest? You want an honest leader? Are you really sure you want an honest leader? Because if he's honest, you've got to pay the debt bill. You have to pay your taxes. You have to do everything right. So leadership is a system that is to create policies for you as a people to live under that governance and have everything that you require come out for you. That young people are now involved in the democratic process and beyond our involvement in terms of our PVC which we all must have and which is very very important and was emphasized in the uh, panel session that we had today is that we now must be involved in in depth of the politics um, you know the power of our PVC pretty much is the power to for us to choose amongst the options that have been given to us our PVC has empowered us enough with so much choices to make. We can choose this and choose that and choose this. Okay, so at this point, please, you can join in on the conversation on all our social media channels, on Twitter and Instagram at US in Nigeria. And you can use the hashtag US in Nigeria, hashtag democracy, hashtag elections 2023 to join in on this conversation. Please, let's spread the word. And you can also watch live on Hip TV. So now I'm going to come back to you, um, AY. Uh, we know the power information has, and we have different channels at which we share this. You are one person who shares information through film and comedy, right? So as we know how powerful film is and st storytelling medium, movies can inform us, they can inspire us, and they can change us. Now, do you think Nollywood is doing enough to promote and encourage youth participation in the democratic process? Oh yes, of course. I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, before now, uh, even before these elections, okay. uh, the, these upcoming elections, we've, we've, we've had a series of movies uh, that project you know, that aspect for people to, to have awareness. Uh, uh, apart from that, even as actors or as people within the entertainment space, we also operate in the in the social media circle as well, where we uh, put out information, we try to, there are a lot of people even trying to box uh, some of us at the moment to make a decision to uh, pick a candidate, to say where you belong or what you want to do or how you want to do it. And But there are some of us who are also not doing it. 
from the entertainment family for reasons best known to some of you here and others who are, who are going to play ignorant to that fact. You know that when you pick a side and when you pass the message that you want to pass, at the end of the day, pray that that party wins. Even entertainers are fighting each other. So, I mean, yeah, the radio, social, social media, media space, go there yeah. now. Oh, why would you say this about candidate A? Mm. And why would you say this about candidate B? And we never had this before now. Mm. Before now, everybody would just sit back, relax, enjoy whatever comes, and would just go with the flow. Right now, nobody wants to go with the flow. If you are not flowing in the right direction, we will go correct yourselves. <laughs> everybody is ready. And that is why I say that 2023 yeah. is going to be a different one. Yeah. It would definitely, definitely be different. Thank you so much. Now, um, Molly, what is the United States doing to encourage youth to participate in the upcoming election? Especially for those also in diaspora. So, Gif, that's a very important question. But if I might, I want to pick up uh, okay. on AY's point. All right. So, you identified Nollywood quite correctly mm -hmm. as a major factor, mm -hmm. uh, a major influencer. Right. And so, people are looking to see what your position might be, and yeah. you yourself especially. Sometimes, because of the United States global position, people are looking to us. Who are we backing? And I want to make very clear that we are not backing a single individual, a single candidate, mm -hmm. a single party. We're backing democracy, democracy and the process. And I think it's really important for all of you. <laughs> so with regard to the youth, let's talk a little bit about Nigerian youth. And thank you for letting me sit here with you. You guys are the future. You are really the global future. Everyone knows that Nigeria's young population, its population growth is going to mean you're going to be in the top tier of the international community. So what you do matters. So I really wanted to come here and say that you don't need my help, any American help, uh, to engage and, and, and lead your society. Everyone here has heard what you've all said. You, you know your system better than any outsider. Um, we're just here and the kind of activities we do in this country are just to support your process. Uh, to, to, you know, we, we wanted to share our experiences, see if they're useful to you. We had a challenge recently, as you know, with a peaceful transition of power. I want to be here passionately to say to you, don't make that mistake. You know, this is a process that's going to work for your country. You need to respect the results because you're going to have a credible process because of what you've done. So those are some messages I wanted to share. Thanks, Gary. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. A very mind uh, and eye-opening experience. Uh, I think conversations like this are very important. Actually, in the run-off to an election, many deem as a very important election in, uh, in our country. So conversations like this open up a whole space. We need to discuss things that pertain to our countries. And as far as this panel session went, it was really impactful. It was, we were able to have impactful conversations. And you know, young people like myself were able to learn from the array of speakers that that were available to us. So we're coming to you, Lacon. So most recently, there's been a reinvigoration of youth participation in politics, governance, and human rights advocacy. A typical case would be the NSAS protest in 2020 against police brutality in Nigeria. Now, in what other avenues do you think the youth, women, and other marginalized groups can influence the policy and overcome the barrier that he experienced in trying to positively impact governance in their local communities? Um, thanks for that question. So um, prior to the NSAS, the, the same year the NSAS a protest happened, that was the year that I went into the yeah. Big Brother house and I won. And I feel like some form of, um, some form of awakening came to the mind of people from that. But because I am a product of everybody coming together and say this guy has to win and then that same idea was what they said but, but wait why are police brutalizing us let us go and protest and i think that's the same idea now that is here is saying we want change and like we need somebody else but i personally I studied philosophy, so I 
always try to look at things from the everything that is happening physically comes from the mental and I think it's still here first that we change our mindset as a people then we can change the structure of governance so because the structure in place it's not favorable I'm not going to lie and 774 delegates so imagine you're able to get that 100 million naira to buy the nomination form and you go for the primary election 774 delegates and there are people prepared to pay them twenty thousand dollars each times 774 where how and that's presidency governor the same thing in states and the fact that there there's how they use this political mentorship and because in the system in nigeria the way it works is you know somebody is how you can get to somewhere and then that person that got you somewhere, you are indebted to the person. So are you going to do what is good for the people or for that person? And that's why you find, you find them creating policies to fight against one another, as opposed to creating policies that would help the people. I mean, in a, in a situation whereby you say, oh, let's change the Naira design. It's, it's, it's going to look better now and find whatever the idea was. It's going to stop um, terrorists from getting more. It's going to stop people that are embezzling more. They're not embezzling. I, I don't think, I think I, as, as I am, I'm smart enough to know that if you want to do something, you do it in a way that other people will not be able to counter it. So it's not the Naira that you're that you going to use to embezzle. There, there are other ways to. So now people are suffering for it. And I cited an example when we were having a conversation earlier inside that. The UK are going to change their currency because they have a new king. And they are not saying, everybody, go and return the money with you. What they would do, the most sensible thing to do is continue spending the money naturally. Eventually, the old notes will go to the bank and there will only be new notes in circulation. It's, it's the, how did they do the former notes that they changed? They've changed the money before, that 15 era, 10 era, 20 era. They didn't say, pack all your money and go and return to the bank. So, so as long as individual people are in governance for their own selfish interests, they would bring young people like me into that position, and I will be indebted to them. So when they are not there to, I am still following whatever it is they ask me. And that is what happens. You have somebody saying, oh, let this person go and represent somebody here. Let this person go and represent somebody here. So even as youths here, I'm, te I'm, I'm telling you, I'm thinking, what we need to do is come together as youths, formulate our, oh, what am I saying? Register a, to register a political party in Nigeria, if it's the same process as collecting your PVC, your driver's license, your international passports, how do, how, how do you think that is going to be? So everything is basically stacked against us. So my solution is this, sensitize ourselves. And it gets to a point where enough of us will know that presidency is fine, but there's 360 people in the House of Rep. There's 109 people in the Senate. If we have 360 people who genuinely want to change our country, 109 people who genuinely want to change our country, regardless of whosoever is president, if you're not doing the proper thing, we can tell you to go. So if you genuinely want to change this country, whatever age it is you are now, that is another avenue to go, the legislature. It is there. You don't have to be governor or president before you can change the country. So many views were shared today, so many young people sharing their hopes and their dreams, their fears, you know, some preferring solutions, you know, and I think that's where we need to be as a people. Thank you. Now, so I'm going to throw it to some of our distinguished guests right here. Um, we have Dear Mio Kolawon, please, uh, would you like to, you know, share your thoughts on the topic of today? This, I could easily say, has been one of my proudest moments as a Nigerian youth. Um, I don't hold this microphone lightly, and I don't think I would deserve to hold this microphone or say anything if I didn't also have my, you know, for safety reasons, I've blanked out a few things. Um, if I also didn't have my PVC, we're not going to get it perfect, guys. No matter what candidates you choose, we are not going to get it perfect. And as Nikon said, the system is already flawed. Only us as individuals can now come together and decide, first of all, what is a Nigerian? 
what do we represent when people fight for their countries and they fight for their people and they say we never leave a citizen behind there's a reason for it because they understand that this is who this person is what is a nigerian once every single person takes responsibility perhaps maybe we can start to change the tide of this nation we are not going to get it perfect but we can at least make one significant change ever so often this election is coming get your pvc and even if you hadn't had and there have been different theories even if you haven't gotten your pvc cafe is right support those who have protect those who have advocate for what you believe in it's not your business who somebody else is voting for it's you find the people who have the same mindset with you and you you you, you come together and fight this battle with your pvc not with guns not with not with not with violence with your pvc with your voice thank you very much thank you so much Demi. please a round of applause for Demi. thank you so at this point we're going to throw um the q a session so please if you have anybody in the crowd who has any questions they would like to ask our panelists i'd like to know um will the u.s government uh, this question is for molly will the u.s government be participating in you know um the elections and are you going to be you know monitoring the elections basically it's my question Did there you... are important jargon words in the business of elections okay there's the word monitor and the word observe and the international community has decided it's important for the nationals of any particular country to have the responsibility to monitor their own election to make sure it meets your standards and then the international community plays the role of observing elections uh, according to international standards and making a judgment about that. So not only will the U.S. Embassy and other, I think, friendly embassies in Nigeria play the role of observer, but also uh, sort of well-regarded uh, international institutions, including some from the United States, NDI, IRI, will be here with a big observer mission. So our hope is that that will be like a big global eyeball right, to encourage the best behavior of the candidates and the parties and the participants. So that will be the role of the United States and the international community. Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Molly, for that one. Um, I have a comment and a question, and I think my comment would also give um, addition to what Lekon said about mindset. We talk about youth participation. I remember um, 2020, Several groups were actually formed, and there was the intention for us to come together and form a youth political party. I don't know how many of us sitting in this room knew about that, but it was set up across the states. We had, um, it started with the groups, right? And I remember the one for Lagos State, <laughs> and I share this story every time. The person who set up that group at some point wanted other people to be admins on the group. And then he said that for you to be an admin, you should pay 20,000 naira. So I spoke up and I said, but well, we're trying to make a difference here. Why would you ask people to pay 20,000 naira for a free platform? Five people, that was 100,000 naira. I was booted out from that group. Now, my point is, as much as we're pointing fingers to, oh, we want change, we want change, it starts from us, just like what you said, which is what I'm getting to. Because if the young person has the same mindset as the people were trying to get out, by the time they go into those positions, they will do worse. And I believe we're seeing that today. I mean, the POS people today, some of them are young people, and they have become landlords and landladies. They may <laughs> imagine charging 2,000 naira and ridiculous amount. So I think the change, first of all, starts with us as citizens, because not everybody can be president, not everybody can be governor, but in your own space as a citizen, in whatever role you occupy, you can be the difference and make the difference. Thank you so much. Now my question, it goes to you, Kathy, and that's because <laughs> um, one of the things we've seen 2019, 2023, like just like you said, we've seen a decline in female representation. Now my question is, we do have a lot of women empowerment groups, women support groups. What exactly could be the reason? I know, yes, you said um, finances, but the truth about it is if you want to play on a level field, with other people, you must be able to, because even if they tell you it's free, you've already changed yourself and already made yourself live. I want to ask, how exactly can we encourage more ladies, more women to come out? 
because the truth about it is there are people who are actually willing to support you as a lady of course there's also that part where some ladies think support me because i'm a woman no i support you because you're qualified i support you because you have substance i support you because you have something to give so how do we encourage ladies females first of all to be interested in the process and also the confidence build that confidence to step forward one of the major problems i've seen uh, being part of a lot of uh, female led or communities that have women that have voices i i i see so much strength in the voice and power of the average nigerian woman that is in the leadership role but i also see a lion in a cage still complaining like a lion in a cage well, you're a lion in a cage. But when it's time to fight, you're going, you yeah, believe you. Do you get what I'm saying? So, first of all, you need to be able to acknowledge and embody, understand the power you wield in order to go out to the battlefield to where it is needed. I believe that maybe culturally, maybe over time because of the inclusion and the equality fights we've had, all of that has created some limiting beliefs. I would say, and I would just try and create an excuse, because it's an excuse, that we don't have enough sensitization to understand the power we yield. We don't have enough platform to help those who are ready to be frontliners. You cannot keep find, fighting behind the fence of they no let me. Mm. Do you want you? Mm. That's the question. Right. Do you want to do something? Go ahead and do it. So if the economy is against you, it shouldn't stop you. Religion was against me, it didn't it stop me. You. Culture was against me, it didn't stop me. Family, the one unit that should protect me was against me, it didn't stop me. Friends were against me, it didn't stop me. Society <laughs> was against me, you didn't stop me. Even the artists that I'm working for became scared of how I am for them. It still didn't stop me because I made them understand the value I am to them don't let anybody stop you all right no more excuses thank you so much dr kathy for adding for sharing that there's a lot of squabbling going on between nigerian youth it seems to me like a very very big distraction while we're supposed to be focusing our energy on finding a solution to this country's problems we tend it would seem to be fighting amongst each other. We've been doing this for years. The only difference now is we have social media and the anonymity of social media to be very, very vile and to be very, very disrespectful towards one another. And you mentioned it earlier, entertainers are now at the forefront of this fight. It has brought, it's, for me, it is so appalling, it is disgusting when we start to throw tribalism to allow that to divide us when we should be focusing on on how to become this Nigeria that we're talking about. Um, how do you think we can? We can. Because you know, you're older than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know you try to look like I think we have made. I'm a youth. <laughs> you have. <laughs> you are an advanced youth, sir. <laughs> can you can you at least again can you can you, if you can share what what you think we should be doing or how we can solve this? First of all, I would like to say this. Um, we tend to use any available opportunity to trend. Most of us, yes, we, we tend to use, uh, when, whenever there's an opportunity to trend, some of us, we just don't understand how to go about it. But this is not the right time. This is a time that we need to come together. Now, all of that is happening in our space, in our circle as entertainers, because there is no unism. We are not very much together. So when there's an opportunity to hit at the other person, we, we jump on it. And Lekon talked about change. Let me go back to that fundamental structure. The leadership that we seek today must start from you as an individual. What are you doing to savage Nigeria? What are you doing to help the situation? Kathy was just going on and on, and I was just smiling. Yeah, she did something, not just for herself, but she created, she didn't just end there. She created opportunities for a lot of talents. 
and then you can see some other established dancers now i will say that about ay that is also sitting here now a lot of people will be like okay is ay the comedian i didn't just come from anywhere someone saw me and invited me over to lagos he supported my career in the person of alibaba and i became the ay brand and i said to myself you ay god will punish you if you as ay you won't create that same opportunity for others you will not grow and guess what the more you create that opening the more you grow what are you doing to help your immediate family how are you making life easy for the people around you what power do you have and how do you use the power do you use it to oppress people do you use it to the advantage of the people around you the more we start doing that for ourselves that's when you will have the new naira note you will not hold it or ask your fellow to give you more money the more we start doing that to ourselves the more you will not hold any of these other opportunities that we have and together we will make nigeria great again and don't forget the race is not only to the swift neither the battle for the strong but this 2023 time and chance will Thank you. All right, thank you so much. A round of applause for AI, please. Thank you so much. So, Mali, what would be your final remarks on this issue of the um, upcoming election? In most of human history, the big man ruled. The idea of democracy is a revolutionary idea which still has relevance today. And it has relevance for countries like America and like Nigeria because it encompasses diversity. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter what your religion is, what your tribe is, whether you're from north or south, east or west. It doesn't matter whether you live in the countryside or in the city. Everybody is equal under the law. Everybody has a voice. This is an idea worth protecting. So, as again, as a fellow democracy, as a, as a, federal, a fellow federal system, a fellow diverse society, we've come to encourage you to keep the, the flame of democracy burning. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Molly. A standing ovation for all of my panelists today. I would like for you guys, please, I crave your indulgence to so please give all of my panelists a standing ovation. Thank you so much as we have. Thank you so much. At this point, uh, we get to wrap it up. Thank you so much. There are two things. There are two things I'd like for us to take out of here. The change you want to see starts with you right you need to do what you want to see be that thing that you want to see in your community and in your society and to everybody around you and we also need to desensitize like lecon said so if you have or you find yourself in a space where you need to talk to people teach people the right way please do that and also do the best that you can do thank you all thank you all uh, my name is remains give to david and at this point we get to wrap it up and um Thank you so much for the US to the US consulate, right, for putting this amazing initiative together. I mean, we are all informed now and better still are more enlightened on what to do and what not to do. Anyway, God bless Nigeria. God bless America. Bye for now.